And we are live right now. Welcome, everybody. My name is Brian Kwong. Don't mind my cold um, hoodie look because I'm outside 7 o'clock. I don't know what I was thinking when I was scheduling this Google Hangout. <laughs> and I realized I don't have internet at home, so I had to go outside some cafe to do this Hangout. Um, that's why I look like this. <laughs> Anyways, um, at one Chan is all about um, language learners around the world getting together and um, aiming for the same goal of being able to hold a 15-minute conversation in 90 days. 15-minute conversation in 90 days. And today we have Jake Brown with us. Jake, how are you doing? Good. Good. Thank you for being with us. No problem. And Jake is quickly introduced very quickly. Jake won. Uh, but let, let me just quickly introduce okay, you. Yeah, you Jake won. Um, at one challenge number five, he's the he was the first ever um, prize winner of that one challenge where we give away a free round trip ticket to the target to the to Jake's target countries, and he won the first ever giveaway prize and he went to Beijing and have had a heck of a trip. I'm sure he can tell us a little bit about it, and um, and now he's in the at one challenge number nine, learning German now. And mm -hmm. he's he's flying and kicking butt in German. So we just wanna we just wanna have a ch hang out with Jake and see you know what what had him um, thrive in the at one challenge. So Jake, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, so hi guys. Um, my name is Jake Brown. I'm 14 and I'm from Melbourne, Australia. So quite far away from everywhere else, but um. I was in the fifth Ad One Challenge, like Brian said, and I was learning Mandarin and I studied for the for the nine days and at the end of the ninety days um I held a one hour conversation with uh, one of the tutors on Itokai and then um yeah it was a lot of fun and then after that I won the prize and I had an amazing trip to Beijing. Um I'm sure there's a, there'll be a link somewhere in the description or something um that you can go and see that video. And yeah, I had a uh, so much fun, and then after I couldn't, uh, I couldn't stop myself from learning another language. So I decided to learn German, and now it is day sixty something, and it's going really well. And my German has improved quite a significant amount, and now I can communicate quite fluently. Not fluent, but it, I can communicate my ideas all right. <laughs> Great. So let's start. Let's start with uh, the questions now. Let's look at it. What's the first question? Um, cause this question is from the email list because it's a very, very, this, how it all starts. So let's start, answer a question from Hugo. Um, I want to know how this challenge work, works. So I guess, um, we don't have to explain everything in details, but let, let, why don't Jake, why don't you say what works for you? So essentially, the R1 challenge is a group of fantastic language learners who just want to uh, have this 15-minute conversation in their target language. And um, Brian Kwong, who organizes it, um, is he works really hard and he puts a lot of effort into it. And um, if you, if you put in the hours and you put in the um, and you work hard to to improve your skills and and speak speak in um, your target language, you will improve and. Um, as is seen, if you can if you can see the difference between all the day zero videos and the day ninety videos, um, significant improvement is made, and and that's something that you can't just do by yourself. Because I found that whenever I've tried to learn a target language by myself, when I, I've tried to learn Mandarin by myself a few times, and after a week or so, it just all falls apart. And that's that's what the Ab One Challenge helps to helps you to do to keep keep on track and keep motivated and keep learning that target language. So how how does it work? I mean, like how how does it work for you? Like, what is the best? What so just say a few things about like what works for you? Why? So you just said that when you learn by yourself, you you fall apart in a week, but in the at one challenge, you co keep going. Why is that? The main the main I don't know what you say. The main aspect of the challenge that keeps you keeps you going for me is the accountability sheet. When I'm by myself, I kind of like, oh yeah, I won't study today. Or I'll study tomorrow, or in a few days, or I'll I'll just study an hour tomorrow, or whatever. But then, with the, uh, you get an accountability sheet, and everyone can see that. And then every day, you put in your little your little yay, or if you didn't study, you put in your your nay. And then after that, you you can see your progress, and you keep and you keep getting that motivation to keep going. 
but if you if you do if you do end up not studying for a while, you can put something in in our special group, and people will people will help you and help you to get back on track. I see. So what Jake was talking about is we have an accountability tracking sheet where where it's it's a, basically a spreadsheet of everybody's name in the at one challenge and. Whenever we finish our day's work, we'll go into this spreadsheet and record, yay, yay, we did our work. And we can see each other if they, we did our work or not. And so we kind of keep each other motivated and accountable for that. And also, and we are, mo what is our motto? Uh, I know. What oh, it, uh, it's Dude. like, um, no? It's like, uh, oh, damn. No, no, no. We're on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> My motto is, one yay at a time. One yay right. at a time. <laughs> I knew that. Yeah, you knew that one. Okay, all right. So why don't we take a question from from the people in the Hangout? So who has a question? Anybody? Anybody want to ask a question? Jess, Jesper, Jesper, and Sri Kant. Sorry. <laughs> okay, if you don't ask a question, we'll ask a question. Okay, this question is from Ben. Oh, Jes Jesper, are you going to ask a question? You got to unmute yourself. Yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah. yeah. Good morning, guys, or it's Good morning, morning here. Yeah. It's all good. I don't know. I'm learning Japanese right now, and I find mm -hmm. the reading really, really hard uh, because... Kanji? Yeah, exactly. Mainly the kanji. I'm trying to learn hiragana, and it's it's doable, but the kanji is just a huge mess. Mm -hmm. um, so, would you just recommend that I completely ignore it for now, or how how long have you been learning Japanese for? Um, well, it started over a year ago, but I had a break of um, yeah, I don't know, eight months or something like that. Uh, All right. So, effectively, so for me, oh, yeah. yeah, for me in my Mandarin challenge, I started off for the first perhaps 30, 40 days, and I just completely ignored, completely ignored characters. I just focused on communicating, um, communicating just through speaking. I didn't, I didn't read. I, I just listened and I spoke, and that was my main goal. So I just kept going like that. And then once I could actually, I had my vocabulary, well, the opinion, um, which is the equivalent of the characters. Once I had that down and I could actually communicate my ideas, then it was actually quite quick to, to learn the, the um, whatever, the, the Hanzo or the, or the Kanji. And the way I did that was with mnemonics, and there's guides all around the, the internet that I'm sure you can mm -hmm. find if you just search up mnemonics for it. And I used that by breaking down the character into its radicals and then learning like that. And that's how I learned after. And But for the first, I'd recommend for the first month or even two months or so, Ignore them completely and make sure until you can get the until you can actually communicate in the language and then once you're there then you can start learning. Okay, thanks. So work on work on Romaji first, man. Yeah. Cool. All right. So let's uh, let's let me look at a question in the, um, uh, from from someone in the at one challenge, but uh, he's not here right now. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I would like to know Jake's daily routine to learn languages with resources he utilized to learn. What resources do you utilize to learn and how you learn German? And at the same time, keep Mandarin fresh. Just go with your daily routine. Uh, what is your routine? So my daily routine is usually, because I'm in holidays now, I ignore that, that I'm in holidays because no one's usually on holidays. When, I, when I'm at school, of course, I have to go to school. Um, I go from school from – after I leave the house at 7.30 and I come back at 4. So that's quite a chunk of my day gone. So what I usually do is, um, which might not work for everyone, I usually wake up at about 6.30 and I learn German. I try and get it all out before I go to school because then when I come back from school and I'm exhausted and I have to do homework and stuff, I don't have to worry about my German. I've already done it. I've done it in the morning and I can get it out of the way. And then sometimes I have a, I, an I talk I session later in the day, um, but sometimes I also have that in the morning as well. But I'd recommend, I'd much recommend to um, get it out in the morning. And usually I, I listen to a podcast in, a mor in the morning, or sometimes I do a bit of reading. And um, it's actually a bit of funny because I wake up some people in my house when I'm like repeating <laughs> a podcast or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, it's all good. And then 
sometimes if I don't get it out in the morning, then I have to come home and do it, and I do the same the same process. But most most of the time, it's it's in the mornings. So what do you do in that hour? How, do you study an hour per day? How what's, yeah, what's your routine? Hour what's, day. Your, what's, your, hour what's, day. What's, what's your goal week of the week? Oh. Uh, five five days a week I study an hour, so that's five hours a week. Um, Got one it. hour, one hour. Okay. And in that hour, usually about twenty minutes of that is one podcast, because that's how long the podcast usually go for. And then I take that. That's the whole podcast with the with. The, they usually have a dialogue. This is the German Pod One on One podcasts. Okay. If you know them, yeah. they have them. They have them for all the different languages, like your language here, Pod One and One dot com, and then you can search that up. They have podcasts for everything. So usually they start with dialogue, then they they go through the dialogue with all the vocabulary and then they have this cultural part, but I skip that bit. Um, so I listen to the dialogue maybe 10, 20 times, which is quite a lot, but um, I find that I'm a much more quality of a quantity and I prefer to get all the words out of a dialogue rather than listen to many different dialogues. And then after I do that, I go through the vocabulary, I put that on Anki, but most of the time I don't go to my Anki deck. I'm, I'm a bit lazy like that. <laughs> but um, And then I try and use the words that I learn in my iTalkI session, which will be either the next day or the day I do with that. And then that way I don't actually need to use the Anki decks because uh, if I use a word, it's you, you'll remember it rather than just reading it and listening to it. And then after I do that podcast, um, I do some reading. I use um, Blue, 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 or I don't know how to say it. Um, but I've used uh, Link in the past as well, uh, and also uh, Yabla, which I enjoy. That's Yabla is, is just pretty much videos, and that's sort of like if I don't really want to study that day, I just watch a few videos. Or there's also uh, German videos on YouTube, which I can watch. And then, of course, there's my speaking session, which will be sometime in the day. I see. I see. So sounds like. So it sounds like you mix thing, mix things, and mix your many different activities that you mix thing, mix them up, mm -hmm. and depending on how you feel and stuff like that, that's important, oh, right? Oh, music, music as well. Music. Love German music. Yeah, it's important to mixing. Why is it important to mix things up? Because sometimes I did this with some other languages, and it didn't really work. Because it, like, I did it for Anki, and I did Anki every day for my one hour, and I, that lasted about, I think, three days, and then I'm just like, no, I've had enough here, and then I'm ready to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't, yes. I didn't, that was, that was Russian, when I tried to do Russian, and I was just doing Anki, okay, I'm going to do Anki 60 minutes a day, I'll do 60, it doesn't work. You get really bored, and it, it, you just, you just lose motivation, because you don't see any, any progress. I think Benny Lewis said, um, if you if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and you expect different results, it's it's just not going to happen. If it's if you if you do the same thing and you're expecting different results, it's nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. So I think you answered a lot of questions already in here. So somebody asked, um, uh, let's see, how do you balance learning? Learning a language, daily school activities, hours, and homework. I think you you answered everything. That one also, as well as as well as waking up early, I also do it on my tram ride to school or train ride, whatever okay. you call it. Um, and that one is usually a podcast, either that or um, I can go through my Anki deck if I can be bothered. Got it. So okay, any questions? So somebody, so I can't well, really say your name, but do you use the flashcards from uh, German Pod? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> Definitely. I don't really like flashcards, but I'm just not a flashcard. It depends on the type of learner you are. I find I found some um, polyglots, like uh, I think Judith, Judith Meyer, who actually does the German Pod one-on-one. She likes the, pod, uh, the the flashcards, and that's what she said in a hangout ages ago. Um, she said she really likes Anki, but it depends. It depends if you if you like flashcards, by all means, do do flashcards. But I'm just not the kind of person who who really likes it. Okay, anybody has a question in the Hangout? Can you mute yourself, Jasper? What? Can, can I mute? Can you mute yourself? Sure. Thank you. Anybody have a question? Trevor? Do you do, you do many things every day or different things on different day on how is that? Yes, I, I, I think he already answered the questions. Yeah, I've answered that. All right, so um, let me get a question from my, my the list. Okay, um, this question is from Atwan Challenger. 
do you have any sequences for learning language? Do you learn vocab first, then writing, then listening? If so, why do you think yours is effective? Well, like I said before, there's no one way to learn a language. There's, there's many, many different ways that you can go about learning a language. But, and everyone, uh, like my first challenge, I was trying to find which way works for me. But now I know for me personally, and don't, don't take this like gospel or anything because you need to find your way to learn a language. And that's, that's what the Ab1 challenge does. It helps you to, to find, your, find your feet when you're learning a language and you, and you get into a routine of how you enjoy to learn a language. And um, any, all, all polyglots can tell you how they learn languages and some are very adamant about it, about this is, the, this is the right way to learn a language and you have to do it this way, otherwise you won't make any progress or anything. But I think that's all... Uh, that's that's not not very good advice, and I believe in finding your own way to learn a language. But for me, when I start learning a new language, I usually start with audio courses, and um, whether that be the whatever Pod 101 ones, I, I don't mind them. Uh, but Michelle Thomas, I quite enjoy as well. Um, but the main thing that I look for is dialogues, and dialogues for me let me hear the hear the language first, and then I can look up the transcript or whatever. Then after I've got uh, significant vocabulary, um, that's usually actually not even significant vocabulary. After I've just sort of exposed myself to a language and I get into the flow of it and I can understand sort of how the language works, so then I start speaking right away. I start speaking probably from the first week. Um, yeah. I'm not um not not as um I don't know whether you say crazy, but not as intense as Benny Lewis is speaking from day one. What? I think that's a bit what not not from day one. Come on, Jake. No, not from day one, but like. <laughs> But first week. I think first week. First week. Just kidding. I think, um, but I think it's I think it's important to start speaking from from the from early as possible. But yeah. um, I think starting from day one is a bit. I'm not sure. I, I haven't. I've tried it a few times and I just sort of get a bit overwhelmed. And um, I prefer to sort of expose myself a little bit first. And that's that's like not um, like a month or like a year or anything. I I'd soon I try and speak as early as possible, but. Got it. Yeah, I, I feel that. Um, so sometimes... you get some. So you get some dialogue in first, and, mm -hmm. and then you. you speak oh, and also uh, I make yeah. I make a cheat sheet. Um, Benny was said to do that. Cheat, cheat sheet. Of, uh, my name is. Uh, how are you? Uh, where yeah. are you from? You know all all of that, and then that's just that gets me through my first conversation easy. Just gets you started. Yeah. I see. Okay. So any anyone else in the hangout has a has a questions. Um. So. Somebody, Sir, Sir Kent, I can't really say your name, sorry. So how, what are your opportunities to find conversation partner besides iTalkGuy? Well, do you want I, to actually had, huh? I actually had, huh, no, uh, I actually had a bit of trouble for my German compared to Chinese because there's a, there's a lot of demand for Chinese people wanting to learn English compared to German people who want to learn English. So what I did was, um, take advantage of what I already know, and what I did was um, I put on I put on iTalk and I searched through, and I said, "Hi, um, my name is Jake, and I've I've learned Chinese for three months, and my level's quite good now, and I can converse quite well. Would you be interested in a German Chinese exchange?" And from that, I got like ten times more responses than I got for oh, German nice. English exchange. So then now I have all these partners where I can practice two languages at the same time. I can practice my German and my Chinese. Oh, that's how you keep it up then, I guess. So that, that was that was one of that's one of the main ways that I keep up my Chinese. Ah, so it sounds like that's always a, there's always a way if you keep if you keep experimenting and and playing. And that's mm. I guess that's a big part in that one challenge. As people we as people to experiment um, to find your own way, as you said, Jake. Mm. Okay, so let's see in a question. Daily routine, okay. Okay, how do you keep your... So this is from Ashley from the Ad One Challenge. How do you keep yourself from getting discouraged when you think about how far you have to go to achieve the level of fluency you want? I think the answer to that is just do the Ad One Challenge. Um, <laughs> when, I, when I do the Ad One Challenge, I, I get motivated and I don't even think about the end goal. It's, it, it's just... You get, you get way too overwhelmed if you think, oh, I, had, I can only say like one sentence, so I, I'm I'm nowhere, I'm never going to reach a good level of German, and that's that's how you that's how you get discouraged. But if you if you just ignore it and you say, okay, I know I know how to introduce myself in German. That's that's one goal I've reached. I've reached one goal in German. Keep going, mm. and step by step, you you become fluent in the language. Mm. Mm. So you don't think about the the 
mount like really, really far away goal. You just yeah, no. take it one step at a time. Go with how are you, and yeah. how do you eat this, or how old I am, and and yeah. and, and one at a time. Phrase cool. Okay. One more time. Phrase by phrase. Phrase by phrase. There you go. Take it phrase by phrase, and one day at a time. One day at a time. Okay. Um, let's see. Anybody in the hangout has a question? Trevor, you said, worry about negative reinforcement. What do you mean by that? Can you be more specific? Let's see if my mic works. Yes. Yep. Right. Well, no, so, so you said that you were doing a Chinese-German exchange, but wouldn't mm -hmm. that basically mean that both people in the exchange are learning a language? Like the, the the language you're communicating with, which could cause a negative reinforcement loop. Yeah, but my my main goal with the exchange is more or less just to try and get me to speak Chinese. I don't. I'm not so much like if I want correction about what I'm saying, then immediately ignore the ignore the conversation exchange. Go go into an Eintalkai session. But my my main goal with the German Chinese exchanges are just to just to let my brain do okay. How do I say this in Chinese? And then expose myself and then. I d it, it's and then you can get the feedback from the other person, but I, I don't think I've ever got a negative reinforcement loop or anything. And and I think I think he's not the only doing that. He's doing no, all the other. I can I can do that question. That was one of the questions. What was that? Um, from Kevin. Do you want to say that question? No no no. He we're, we're uh no no. Say Kevin's think question. We, we just, to that. No, no. He, let's let's go with the trivial tri questions, because because uh. if you are only doing that, you're only doing language exchange with with a with the beginner. And of course, yes, there could be a negative reinforcement. But if you're doing all the other things, like listening to podcasts, also doing I talk I tutor, and all these different things together, and you don't have to worry about it. And and when I was in China, I went to this yeah. bookstore and I bought all of these. So I got all of these books here. This nice. is nice. And then this one, classically, this is a book about German in Chinese, so oh. German, comics, so. and I've been going through them. So nice. So let's let's uh, just a side question. So how was how was the trip in Beijing was for you? When I, when I first reached out, I thought it, there's there's a tiny bit of cultural shock, but um, I, I got used to that pretty quickly. And then also because the the Beijing dialect is a little bit different, so at first I'm like, oh, I can't speak Chinese, I can't understand any of this. But then straight after the first day, I could I, I was um, I was walking down, I could understand everything. And then from that from that second day, I tried to speak as much Chinese as I could. And then I really feel and then it was a lot of fun speaking to the locals. Um, I went to a few local parks in in the area, in my area, and just sat down and then started conversations with people, and then you know, had some really interesting conversations, um, as well as um, easily doing everything that I needed to do um, in in Chinese. But um, a funny thing is that um, because my mum's uh, Malaysian, a lot of people came up to her um, at first saying, "Oh," and speaking to her in Chinese, and then she's like, "Oh," and then she just pointed at me, and then from there it was it was fine. <laughs> So, so what's that, the biggest? Was, so, so, so I just want to ask you this really important question. So, what's the biggest? So you learn, you learn for ninety days in that one challenge, and then you went there to practice speaking with the locals. So, what is the biggest thing you learn about language learning when you're speaking to local? In, um, I learned that when when I was here, I was a bit more a bit more focused about me that um that I I get things wrong. But then once once you're talking with locals and you're there, it's like they they're they're so excited that you have this you have this Westerner or someone outside of the country speaking the language with with people who you know and then from there I I learned that I don't my Chinese doesn't need to be perfect and then I could still have very meaningful conversations with all these people and um, exchange their culture and that they, they taught me about how how they lived in in Beijing and stuff and um, I learned that through through even whatever whatever level of you have you can you can still have meaningful conversations with people there. So you mean you don't have to be perfect and you can make mistakes when you're speaking yeah. with locals? Really? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, good, good. All right, let's get a question from Amanda. What inspired you to start your journey to wanting to become a polyglot? How does someone your age maintain all the different languages? So I was raised as a monoglot, like 
many most people. I don't know whether most people, but many people. And I, I was raised speaking English, and um, through up until I started high school, which was when I was 13, um, I'd only spoke English. And then it, when I was 13, um, I started learning French at school. And uh, usually, it, it wasn't it wasn't the normal classroom method of you know conjugation tables or like learning the grammar. It was it was this new approach that they had just introduced about speaking the language from day one. And from right from the word go, as I walked into the classroom. The teachers started speaking in French, and we were all very confused. Um, but from there, we we improved very quickly. And then I became I um, I became obsessed with French, and um, I began learning it at home and listening to podcasts. And then from there, I just after after my semester of French was over, I kept I kept going, listening to podcasts. And I'm like, oh, this is actually quite fun. And then from there, I, I dabbled in a bunch of other languages, and somehow I stumbled upon the Avon Challenge. And I'm like, all right, I'll I'll, I'll give this a go. And then um, it gave Mandarin a shot, and from there, it's the same story. Okay, cool. All right, so anybody in the Hangout has a question? Okay. Um, let's see. No. Okay, how long? Okay, so I think we covered... How about Kevin's question? Is, do we cover that already? No. How do you... How do you okay. Cover, okay. You say you can. You can say it. Kevin's question. Can you read? Because I don't. All right. uh, Jake, you were fortunate enough to have the opportunity to practice your Mandarin abroad. Now you're back home, and your focus has shifted to German. Have you found ways to maintain and continue improving your Mandarin despite it not being your current challenge language? So, like I said, um, I've done I've done those exchanges. But as well as that, I've, I've read through, I've started reading through all of these books. But as well as that, um, before the challenge, I was in, I was in Chinese, uh, I was in a Chinese class at school, and that was a very, very basic class, and everyone was pretty, their Chinese was pretty bad, and the, the accent was horrible, and I didn't really learn anything. But then I was still in that class when I was doing the challenge, and it became, it became noticed quite quick that my teacher. I didn't notice oh, this, this class is too easy for you. But the way the way the, the, the system works at my school is you have this beginner class, which is pretty much people who can't speak Chinese, and then you have the native level classes, which is people who've spoken Chinese since they've been little, and they go, they all go into this class. And then so my teacher said, would you be interested in going into that class? And I'm like, oh, it's going to be very difficult. But then once the challenge ended, I was moved to that the native class. And that's nice. probably about like uh, a, like a C1 level class, if you if you know what those are. And my previous one was like an A1 level, so it was a very big jump to go from there. And all we do in that class is we speak Chinese, and that's all it is, speak Chinese. Um, there's been a, like a few essays that I've written in Chinese which I've struggled in, but um, it's it's definitely keeping my level up, and I have to I have to listen quite quite intensely to to understand what's going on in the class, and that's been what. Um, so that I have that class almost every day, so that's. Um, have been doing it without needing any extra time um, for for German. Cool. So going to class and doing um ex German Chinese exchange is how you keep your Mandarin and also progressing with your German. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So we almost time's almost up. So um, let's see. Um, yeah. So do you recommend uh, at one challenge? What do you think about that one challenge, Jake? <laughs> um, it's it's an amazing experience, and for anyone who, especially people who have struggled in learning a language, maybe you've you've attempted to learn your target language, but you've sort of fell apart after a month or a week or so, and you're like, oh, I'm never going to learn this language. The Abon Challenge is specifically made for you because if you do the Abon Challenge, you you will get to day ninety and you'll be able to speak speak the language, and um, that's that's um, who I recommend it. But I'd also recommend it to anyone. Who is interested in learning a language? It's a very, a very worthwhile experience. Just want to say, you still, the M1 Challenge can support you and empower you, but at the same time, you still got to do the work. Yeah, um, yeah. There's been, there's been people who are like, oh yeah, this M1 Challenge is just gonna do it for me, but you still got to, you still got to put in the time and the effort, and you've got to, you've got to have the motivation to actually learn your language. You can't just be like, oh, this, this M1 Challenge is just gonna spoon feed me. Um, you got to, you got to try and put in the hours. Yeah, and and it's just a lot more effective learning in a group. Basically, why is it effective? Just we're learning in a group instead of learning a group who's striving for the same goal instead of you doing it all by yourself. 
the main the main reason that I think is that um, accountability. Like I said before, if you if you do it by yourself, you you don't have any accountability, and no one sort of um, um, no one's sort of there to, to pick you up or say, hey, you, haven't, you haven't studied a German for the past month or so. But if you uh, learning in a group, there's people saying, oh, yeah, how are you going? Um, how's, your, how's your German language going? Or oh, have you tried doing this in your learning? And then you get different perspective about different perspectives about how to learn a language as well as um, being held on track. Cool, Jake. All right. Thank you f for hanging out with us. And um, then... The next At One Challenge is starting soon, in a few weeks, so go to atonechallenge.com and um, sign up to get notification. And thank you for hanging out, everybody else. You guys have a good day. See ya. See ya. Bye. See ya.